much everyone for being a part of our community of practice. Um, uh, Jaisri, would you want to just give most yeah. of them who are just attending for the first time to understand what community of practice is all about? Would you like to yeah. just share? Thank you, uh, Viveki. And uh, yeah, good evening, everybody, once again. And uh, um, we know it's been uh, more than a month since we met last. Um, yeah, but uh, it's good to see again people, so many of you coming on a Saturday afternoon uh, <clears throat> and joining this community to learn so that we can help and support our students in their learning. Um, so I'm sure all of you are back in your physical spaces, physical school. And uh, what we've been hearing time and again from educators across the country is um, that, you know, after lockdown and uh, the virtual <clears throat> schooling, children, uh, it's difficult to get children to, uh, you know, again, get back, get them back into the routine of a physical classroom. And um, uh, especially writing is what we heard, you know, people saying that it is really, really difficult because children seem to have forgotten how to write. So, and of course, we have the NEP, uh, which says that we have to really focus on literacy and numeracy skills. Foundational literacy and numeracy is one of the you know, highlights or focus areas according to NEP 2020. So keeping all of these in mind, so we thought, uh, let's kind of put our brains together today and see what we can do, some, what are some simple things we can do to help our children write in a fun way, easy way, interesting way. So we have Viveki today. Uh, Viveki Pasta is not uh, new to many of us who have uh, been associated with Adhyayan, either with workshops or even with the community of practice sessions. In the community of practice itself, Viveki has done a session on sketch noting, and uh, she's uh, along with me, she has, we've done you know, um, several workshops on the online space uh, for Adhyayan. So uh, Viveki is a consultant with Adhyayan, and of course she's, uh, true educator at heart. She has more than 20 years of experience as an educator. And she's, she has been in various roles, ranging from an academic head uh, to a de facto vice principal, which she was at the Heritage School Vasant Kunj in New Delhi. Then she was also uh, the HOD for the pre-primary at Sushwan, in, which is an ICSE school in Mumbai. And of course, as a classroom teacher, she has taught for several years, and she's uh, taught in Indus International, <clears throat> which is an IB school in Pune. And of course, she has also taught in Shishwan. So she has also, of course, worked as an educational consultant. And over the last two or two and a half years, when uh, school suddenly closed, the entrepreneur that she is, she opened up something called uh, Thinking Cape. So she's a founder of Thinking Cape, and which is an online space that works with children to enhance skills, explore and imagine through various short-term projects. And Viveki is a great writer. Writing is, again, very close to her heart. She does a lot of fun uh, things with her own kids. I, she keeps telling me that. And of course, she also, in, through Thinking Cape, she has addressed writing skills for many of her students who have joined her online classes. So no one better than Viveki who can really kind of share her experience of how fun teaching and learning writing can be. So <clears throat> thank you, Viveki. And now over to you. Thank you so much, Jashri. So um, welcome. Thank you, Jashri, for such a lovely introduction. Um, so just to quickly add to what Jashri said, yes, I, uh, I, I took a sabbatical from work full-time work because of the pandemic. Uh, I had children at home, so um, took some time off to work with them, which was actually great because through that I learned a lot. And um, yeah, uh, coming quickly to today's session, uh, since it's a community of practices, uh, I would like to hear all of you uh, through the session. It's definitely not a one-way session, okay? Uh, so please be free to kind of unmute yourself, uh, share your thoughts, uh, share some great practices that you have been uh, doing with your children in class or you have probably experienced somewhere. So if we all share, then we become a part of the community, right? 
since this is not a workshop, it's a community. So we would love to hear so much more from you. Yeah, and um, it's always great to hear from some wonderful educators who are a part of this team. We already have about 35 participants um, today. So uh, moving to today's session, we're going to be exploring some ideas and strategies that we can use in the classroom to support uh, writing skills. But before we do anything of that sort, first we need to quickly understand what writing skills are all about, right? So, um, Writing is definitely linked to critical thinking skills. If I'm able to think about something, I can write. If I'm not able to think, I can't write. Am I right? Does everybody agree? So if you do, just show me a thumbs up so that I know you're with me on this. Um, and if you don't agree, uh, please put it on the chat that you don't agree. Uh, that writing is not linked to critical thinking skills. Yeah, nobody's gonna show thumbs up. So in that case, I think all of you disagree that writing is linked to critical thinking skills, no? Okay, all right. So I can see Payal, Payal, lovely to have your video on. Uh, Swamudi, lovely to have your video on too. It's great to see the two of you. Um, request others who can switch on the video so that I know that I have lovely participants out there whom I'm having a conversation with. And it's always nice to see you. Uh, it's okay, you don't have to be dressed up really well. We all are teachers, uh, neither am I, it's just a simple shirt. So, great. So, um, in the chat box, you will see a link, all right? In the chat box, you will see a link, um, which is a Mentimeter link. And uh, if you click on that, it will take you to a page where I would like you to put in your thoughts about what do you think are the skills that children need for any written expression. So if we have got to get children to write, what kind of skill sets do you think they need to have before they actually get down to writing something? <clears throat> so if you quickly click on that link, it'll take you just two minutes to put in your thoughts. And uh, Gauri, can you please share the Mentimeter screen? So we all can see what's coming in. Lovely, okay. We have only six participants in the, um, who have clicked on the link. We request all of you to go to the chat window and quickly click on the link and add in your thoughts. Come on teachers, it's a community of practice. The more we give, the more we get. So let's be generous today. Let's just pour in our thoughts. No one here is judging you. I promise you that. Lovely to see 11 of you who've logged in. Come on. I want everyone to just quickly click on the link in the chat box. Namrata, Vidhi, I hope all of you have clicked. Sindhu. Interest in writing. Yes, Poonam. Poonam, can you quickly put it in the link? If that's possible. Okay, about 30 seconds more. Thinking power, lovely, comprehensive transfers. Okay, all right, great. Rich vocabulary, yep. Puja, Mezabin, Payal, come on, Sarika. It's nice to see all of you logging online on a lovely Saturday afternoon. Yes, Vidya, nice to see you. There's somebody with a Nokia 620 plus name. It'd be nice if I can address you by your name. So if you could quickly put in your name there so I know who you are. Yeah, Monica. Nunal. Deepika. I hope all of you have added in your thoughts. Great. Lovely. So what we see that's interestingly coming out is a center word, okay, which is in dark blue, which says vocabulary, right? And I think that's where all of us are getting stuck, okay? Because that's what most of us have put in. Vocabulary is vocabulary, reading skills. There's lots of reading. There's imagination, definitely imagination, right? So these are the skills that we, we are 100% sure that children require if they need to write. But the thing is, how do we 
ensure that we develop these skill sets with our children okay so we are going to be exploring a couple of uh, activities today uh, to help us enhance especially what we see on screen vocabulary imagination key points how is it that we help them plan key points okay so let's see what is it that we need to do with our children how we can take them through this journey okay thank you gauri all right back to my screen um so if you could quickly unmute yourself and tell me what are the issues you face with writing skills in your classroom since all of you are teachers you must be surely facing some issue with writing skills right there must be something that is holding your children back there's something that you must be experiencing in your classroom so if you could quickly tell me what are the issues you have been facing with your children um when it comes to writing yeah can i yeah okay yes yes sir the grammatical errors and um, probably the rules of the sentence they don't follow that is okay. to start with the with the capital letter end with the full stop or yeah probably using the capital letters for the proper nouns i think these are the few common errors with what they do normally okay lovely thank you samitra anyone else Flow of thoughts. On the chat, she's written spellings. Okay, uh, okay. I I was saying flow of thoughts. They don't know when to put what uh, uh, when they're writing. Sequencing is what goes. Okay, sequencing. Lovely. Thank you, Harshal. No. Sentence structure. Somebody is written. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, students in my class, two students have said that they are very slow in writing. That means uh, they are not having interest of writing, or means they are not at all, you know, getting connected with it because they are not at all writing in class. We can call okay. them as slow writers. Okay, reluctant writers. Okay, slow writers, yes. reluctant writers. Okay, all right, super. Thank you, Poonam. Just is there anything in the chat that I need to know? Organization of thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. And somebody's written transferring ideas into paper. Okay. Okay, transferring ideas onto paper. Didi, yeah. ki I yeah. also think content. They do not have enough content to write. What to write? Content. Super content. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's brilliant. Bad handwriting. Okay, handwriting. Ma'am, they, ma'am, they had uh, no thought. Means, uh, they they are lack of they have lack of lack of vocabulary. Is what you're saying? Lack of ideas. Lack of ideas. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Anyone else who would like to add anything to this list? Jashi, anything in the chat? No, nothing else. We've covered everything. Okay. All right. Anyone else? No one. Okay. So I think by and large, these are the these are the issues that we are definitely facing with uh, when it, with our children when it comes to writing. Okay. So let's look at um, how do we encourage these children to write. Okay. So before we begin, what the sessions really plan? Have any of you used any particular strategies in the classroom? Where you have actually supported a child to write uh, for any of the issues that we uh, have mentioned in the previous slide, has any have any of you kind of um, you know uh, done something different, or have any of you um, kind of uh, experienced something different, or have you know supported your children in a way by which at least one part of what Issue that you think they probably face has kind of been dealt with. Any thought? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, doodling, doodling, you doodling. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, ma'am, can I? Yeah, with keywords. Yeah, yeah. Go on. After discussion. Prompts. It's, it's there in the chat. Yeah, prompts yeah. yeah, I give them prompts too. Yeah. You give them prompts, okay? Prompts, yeah. Okay, so, writing prompts. Make them write a. Yeah. Um, oh, sentence nice. starters. Sentence starters. You give them sentence starters. Wonderful. Uh, 
you know i, I have uh, put up a chart uh, as a as in word wall in my classes mm -hmm. where i teach uh, english so uh, every day i'll give them a topic so they have to uh, uh, based on the topic they have to uh, write a word uh, mm -hmm. you know on the word wall when okay. when first of all they uh, yeah their thinking skills will definitely improve and they will also probably they will uh, they are doing it actually very good they show a lot of interest in that and they are learning new words if they go wrong in the spellings then and there itself i correct them uh, because they only come and erase they correct them by themselves they correct it so that i feel uh, it will definitely work to build up the vocabulary okay lovely okay anyone else Vidya has written brainstorming so okay. i don't know what brainstorming what is it ideas brainstorming what i'm not sure vidya can you elaborate on yeah this? yes yes we discuss on the topic uh, like as a team you discuss and then whatever special vocabularies they come up with i write it on the board and then um, I help them to uh, discuss think pair share also like you know first you do it in larger group then you do think pair share and then it's separate and individually will sit and write lovely so you use a collaborative learning tool in your class that's wonderful yeah. great great anyone else Sight words, okay. Time limit to improve speed. Yes, Poonam, you give them a time limit, right? And that generally works, okay. Uh, yeah. Sometimes for writing, we give them a web so they can prepare the sequencing, prepare a web before they start. So that's mm -hmm. one. Help them uh, jot down the ideas quickly. Okay. Lovely. So these are some great strategies that you've used. So all those who are uh still you know i mean uh, although you feel that you want to pick up some of these ideas and use them in the class or if you have any questions regarding these ideas please be free to ask so that um, you know and then the teachers can definitely explain how they've gone about doing these but these are great strategies that you can actually pick up uh, Mom, uh you know uh, to you i have just one more normally i yeah. also do the word search and crossword crossword puzzles most of the time yeah right based on the topic that you're giving them right ma'am the sentence mark and uh, the stretch the sentence has really helped me in this okay okay stretch the sentence okay yeah. lovely okay so these are some great strategies that you can use in your classroom to encourage reluctant writers or right children who find it hard to write okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to probably take you through an activity or two okay that i use in my classroom which uh, in my in the sessions that i take uh, online and through my experiences that i have learned um, so i'm going to be sharing some some ideas and strategies that have worked for me in the classroom right um so has anybody heard of onomatopoeia No ma'am. No. Okay. Okay. So onomatopoeia. Smiley, do you want to say what onomatopoeia is? Are ma'am, these are the sounds that we mm -hmm. made into words. For example, uh, tip tip. For example, okay. slurp slurp. Hmm. Okay. Words that represent sounds. Right. So yeah. they're words. They're sound words. Okay. So they're words represented by sounds. So when you boom or when you clap. Okay. So yeah. all these are sound words, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. So th those are called onomatopoeia. They are figure of speech. It's a figure of speech. All right. So if you would have noticed, uh, you know, when you when you read a comic or um, uh, when you are uh, when you open, especially our comic books. So that's where you notice these words, right? How many of you now know what onomatopoeia is? Right in front of you. Okay. So these are um, these are some. fun words that uh, children love okay they are some of them will be nonsensical words like zonk and biff and pow and but there will be some interesting words like crash and you know crack and they actually mean something so when you say crack you can in your mind you if you just close your eyes and say crack you can actually feel something cracking right if i say punch in your mind you will actually see an image of something being punched right if i say boom you will see an image of something bursting so these are words that children pick up really well okay so what we're going to do is uh, in the next task i'm going to tell you to observe something all right i want you to observe these two comic strips okay can everybody see okay and uh, quickly in the chat window tell me one or two things that you noticed in this whatever you noticed okay you've got 30 seconds for that 
in the chat window just put in what is it that you notice in this comic strip you've got 10 seconds more come on teacher open your chat box what do you notice in these comic strips okay sound words are used use of onomatopoeias come on anything else words like pick talk lovely anything else you notice there are no dialogues only sounds are used lovely carol lovely okay there's use of doodling yes there's use of doodling there's a lot of expression is an expression with pictures the entire story is told to you with pictures it's only told to you with sounds right okay now when you do a task like this it just becomes interesting right okay so let's see how is it that we are uh, expressions are used in forms of sounds lovely they use in actually forms of words right lovely so what i'm going to do is i want you to just copy either one of the comic strips that you see on screen or you can just create a quick table for yourself okay create a quick table for yourself all right and using these sound words okay i want you to think of a story okay that you could quickly do the for yourself come on i'm going to give you exactly 5 minutes by the clock to do this okay I want you to use these sound words and quickly create a short story like this. You could use either the template that I have provided, or you could create a template of your own. Now, what's interesting here is when I do this with my children, I try and focus on the way these are created. So, if you see, there's a there are two bubbles here, and then there's a big bubble, which means for this frame. the character is thinking right when you go to the next frame there is a spark so there is some action that has happened when you come down here to the fourth frame there's a dialogue there's somebody saying something right okay so when we do when we do it like this children are also now noticing nuances they are looking at what is it that's going to help them okay so if you could quickly put in a short story for me something as simple as this where this boy was sitting bored he didn't know what to do the clock was ticking in the background he was exhausted and suddenly he got an idea he thought he wanted to eat chewing gum or toffee and then he started chewing it and hear him going nom 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 sha sha and suddenly he's blowing this bubble and then he's blowing it like bigger and bigger and then he has flown away bush okay so this is a very short story but it was his grand idea right probably he is having a detention <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do so these are some you know interesting conversations you can have with your children so what do you think this boy is doing why is he what you know what 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 idea does he come up with and then probably have them also say okay using this as your first screen as your starter okay since so, so you give prompts using this as your prompt come up with an idea what he could do to kind of escape his detention okay so this is another way of using this same comic strip so if you could quickly come up with a story anyone who has come up with a story and is willing to share just you know kind of unmute yourself and let me know so that we can put you on spotlight and you can share what you've drawn like anyone you've got like 2 minutes more Come on! Anyone who'd like to share, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can, like, share your screen. Anyone who'd like to share their screen? No one. Nunal, Chindu, Vijay, Shri, Monica. Come on! If we, the more we are going to practice doing something, the more we are going to be able to share it with our children. 
if you are not going to do it would, as kid yes manjusha good evening ma'am i would say about the first one yes uh, manjusha the first one like for the first box has a thinking cloud so a man is sitting near the window would you he... would you want to share your screen uh, manjusha if you draw something you just hold it up against the screen i've not drawn anything i just uh, imagined uh, i just uh, did it in my mind like okay all right go ahead okay go on so if um, that man is sitting near the window and he is looking at the window pane is thinking that this is about to break any time okay. and in the next slide there's a spark so i think the window broke like okay. you know the window pane it crashed and all the glass and all broke and in the third dialogue is his wife is like uh, i have told you several times that uh, you know get this repaired and then again there's a dialogue dialogue when dialogue cloud so he says uh, but i and then you know uh, some conversation like he has, he replies and the uh, wife sings that uh, what kind of a man have i married <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> nice. that was the least i could think <laughs> lovely great but that that's a great beginning manjusha lovely and thank you so much for sharing your thoughts Okay. Anyone else who would Thank like to you. share a story? Anyone? Any brave person out here? Teachers, come on! If you're not going to share, your kids will also never want to share. Come on! Anyone else who would like to share? No one. Kamudi, Kusum, Payal. No one would like to share. So Naina. No, Punam. Okay. Uh, so I have drawn something, but I yet have to add the words and do okay. something. It's not very okay. neat, though. But... It doesn't matter. See, it doesn't matter. Okay. We are not going to focus on neatness. What we are really okay. focusing on here is whether you are able to use. on a matter peers to actually construct a story and i think that's very critical because if you are not going to do it your children are never going to be you will never be able to show your children how to do it okay so i'm going to just spotlight your work so that everybody can see yeah you go on okay so what on a matter peers would you be adding to the story um definitely you're not audible Sorry, it would be like uh, something that shows excitement okay. for the second, for this one, and so like this one could be oops or sob or wah or something yeah. like that. Lovely. Okay, this is great. This is super. Thank you for sharing. Lovely. Anyone else who would like to share? Uh, yeah, I. I, I this is Sunita. I would like to yeah, share, Sunita. but I haven't drawn it. I, I That's fine. Yes, yeah, okay, so go on. basically the first uh, in the first picture the the mother and the kid who's uh, on the uh, at the table dining table mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, the uh, he's trying to apply some ketchup on his uh, on his um, bread and mm -hmm. uh, goes splat it goes all over so mm -hmm. his mom says oops and then mm -hmm. uh, she he says don't worry mom uh, it, i'm just i'm going to spread it all over so don't worry So mm -hmm. that's all I I could manage. <laughs> He Lovely, to just wonderful. Play a little, but then the whole thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. So this is a like wonderful. As you were saying, I was just trying to sketch out something on my screen or uh, my my sheet. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter how it is. What what's really important is if our children can express themselves. Okay, and I think that's where it comes because we're talking about ideas. We're talking about generating ideas, and that is where most of us are getting stuck. right so if you're going to give them opportunities to generate these ideas okay in a fun way in a way where they do not feel threatened right because every idea is a great idea right okay so if we are going to give them opportunities to express themselves so help them think okay in different ways uh, and they don't need to just be like very particular about doodling what is important is whether there's a sequence in what they're thinking all right whether they are able to kind of use just put their ideas on paper and i think that's very important and i think as teachers if we are stuck in what we are doing 
like we have our own inhibitions i think our children will always carry on those inhibitions okay so just try and sketch something out so if any of you want to share it by the end of the session we would love to see it all right okay so i'm going to be moving ahead going to the next task yeah okay so we got done with this okay so this is a second activity that i'm going to be sharing with you today the first one is um we going to show children some objects or pictures okay or words that are associated with adventure for about a minute or two and what i'm going to then get you to do is uh, i'm going to get you to quickly pen down what you saw on screen is that okay uh, be honest with yourself don't write down when you see the screen all right so i would like you to see this for about like a minute by my clock okay uh, try and read the words look at the pictures now for the reluctant writers you can have them draw if you want uh, for children who can write the older children get them to write the words okay rather than draw pictures okay uh, you can use a mix of picture and words again uh, you can have a little bag full of things you don't need to show them pictures you can just have a bag full of things just lay it on a tray and just cover it with a sheet okay or you can have pictures put up on a chart if you don't have access to uh, a screen in your classroom uh, you can just put up pictures and then you can have the children make a note of what they see all right so quickly it's your time let's see how many of them you remember come on payal kusum fazia shweta afiza monica can i say yes go on can i say Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. So there Switch. was a bonfire, and sorry, you can continue. Sunita, okay, Sunita, go on. Yeah. Okay, so I guess there was a bonfire, and uh, they tried to use. Uh, they were in. A, they tried to use the magic carpet to go to the um, cave. Mm -hmm. They used the compass to reach there. I'm just trying to make sentences so that they can remember it, and. Uh, they couldn't they found a treasure map a treasure uh, using a map mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, they reached the island that's all i remember <laughs> but that's wonderful you see that sunita has used a strategy to recall the words okay so she's kind of quickly made a lovely short story, story in her mind lovely sunita that's a great strategy okay lovely thank you Yeah, super. I'll share the screen with you again, and so that you can pen down all the words that you just probably missed out. Go on, Smiley. Ma'am, uh, yes, they have thanks. they have taken a magic carpet to reach the island, and then yeah. in the island there was a treasure. So they have used the treasure map to for for finding the treasure, and then they have got the treasure west, treasure okay. uh, chest. Sorry. Okay. And uh, they also have used some binoculars for that. Mm hmm. And lovely the uh, one more thing was there <laughs> that's it okay lovely so you also constructed a short story lovely yeah yeah nice wonderful yes pile yeah good evening ma'am uh, actually whatever the pictures i saw i can remember i can tell us yeah yeah, yeah so that's yeah. what the game was actually yeah, so they yeah. just used a strategy for recall which was yeah. also great uh first of the, well, the person took that um, mat and he went um, in the island you want to uh, just list down the words you can just tell me the words you don't need to tell me a story no should i tell the only the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thing yeah yeah, 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 story? yeah yeah no 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 you don't need to tell me the story you just tell me the words that you saw the picture okay, that you the, saw there was a there was a mat then mm -hmm. uh, there was a, ma a map the map island was there cave was there binocular mm -hmm. was there compass was there tent were there uh, then um, treasure was there mm -hmm. like it's a totally an adventure things whatever we go and see search it the things with adventure are there right so this the was cave, a memory water. game yeah lovely yeah. it was a memory game okay where i had put pictures so that these pictures now add to your vocabulary and give you a clue to think in a particular direction right so what happens is i am now setting a stage for you to think okay i'm giving you a lead in to start thinking on something like this okay so now you suddenly start making connections so you probably have gone on some trip at some point where you know you had to live in sleep in a tent or 
uh, you you probably have spoken about some treasure map or you've seen how a compass looks and what does a compass do so now you start making associations so when you children start making associations students start making associations with something that they have experienced or seen okay all right it kind of helps them to now start connecting start building all right now what i'm going to tell you to do is on a sheet of paper i want you to quickly draw a mind map on all the words that come to your mind when you hear the word adventure come on you got 3 minutes for this whatever words come to your mind all right if you can just quickly put it down somewhere on a sheet of paper you can just make a quick web or a mind map yeah shweta afida vidya i would love to hear you Kamudi, Tarika, Namrata, Saman. Summer camp. Okay, lovely. Can you just pen it down, or you can even share it in the chat window. Come on. So others can also, um, you know, see. So if all those who want to share it in the chat window, please go ahead. Use the chat window. Liberally. Adrenaline, risk, daring, fun, excitement. Super Manjusha. Lovely, fun. Okay, brave, dare to, trekking, parasailing, hiking, height, mountain, forest, treasure hunt, lovely. Diana, thank you. Summer camp, bonfire, fun, cable car, yeah, lovely. That's interesting. Cliff diving, okay, lovely. Backpacks, uh, high mountain skiing. Now imagine in your class of thirty-five to forty children. Okay, if you do a task like this, can you imagine the amount of words you're going to be receiving? Okay, all right. You got to have kids just write it down somewhere, just pen it down in something where all of them can see it. Okay, bungee jumping, thrilling, resilience, lovely zip lining. Zindagi na milegi dobara. Yes, Manjusha, live life once. Okay, so you can use probably live life king size or something of that sort. Lovely. Okay, beach day, nice. Okay, so we've got lot of vocabulary words that we can now use. So now what I'm going to do in the next task, okay? is provide you with some thinking question all right now that you have the vocabulary that you really require i want you to think in a particular direction okay so what you can do is uh, this is an activity where you can put up four thinking stations in your classroom okay uh, you can in one on one paper you can write according to you what is an adventure and let the children write about what they think an adventure is so you give them like sheets of paper or you give them like just small strips of paper or post it or uh, you can just give them some blue tack or a cello tape where they can just spin up their work or you just do it on a soft board where they can just put it up uh, all the uh, second station using your five senses describe your place of adventure okay so you many of you in the chat window have put up words like um Thrilling, adrenaline, adrenaline. Thrilling. Okay, yeah. so these are all experiences. So use your five senses, you know, and tell them to write down uh, words that come to their mind in terms of descriptors when they are writing for adventure. Okay. Then on the next station, you can have them talk about two or three words to describe the adventure, mainly the feelings. Okay, what did they feel? Did they feel brave? Did they feel Scared? Did they feel uh, lost? Did they feel anxious? Okay, get them to use feeling words to write. Okay, so again, what we are doing is we are now getting them to think a little deeper. Okay, now even children who can't do not have that vocabulary, or who are probably who are probably struggling to kind of think, okay, have suddenly got words now to use. All right. Okay, they suddenly have a lot of words. Now, by putting it up on the chat, what you've done is you've shared your thoughts with everyone. So suddenly, people who weren't thinking in the same direction that you were thinking have now started using your vocabulary to add to their vocabulary, to add to their thoughts. Right? That is the power of sharing. Correct? Yeah. So let the children share, solving difficult problems. Lovely. And the last station you can do is. was there a hero was there a villain was there some danger was there a surprise element was there a suspense element okay get them to write what that was now that is going to be 
used to help them build up their stories further. Sometimes I feel, oh no, my idea is not great, but I like what Apiza has put, or I like what Payal has put, right? Or I like what Gauri has put, or I like what Sanayana has put, or I like what Harshal has put. Okay, so I probably will pick up their idea, which is great, but I, my story will still be my story, right? So if you can put this up for your children, spend some time to let them ideate, let them see, okay? All right? The next task is, once you're done with this, have the children go read, pick up their thoughts, put them down on paper, which ideas they like the best, which vocabulary words they like the best, and then you can have them create a quick story mountain. Okay, now in the story mountain, what you can do is you can give them a template like this, or you can have them create the same in their notebook, all right? You let them write down who are the characters. So basically you're talking about a hero or your villain or whoever, then you get them, so what does the characters really want to do? What are the roadblocks? What are the struggles the character is going through? What happens? What choices does the character make? And finally, how does the story end? Now you're giving them this map. So the sequencing thing that we were talking about, how the children are planning out their story. Okay, they can start putting it in this. Again, remember, this is a graphic organizer. So it's going to just be spurts of ideas that they will still be putting in. So we've now moved from slowly putting them into a shell of thinking then we are getting them to share their ideas and thoughts where they are enriching themselves with vocabulary words, with ideas, with thoughts, with expressions. Now we are giving them a structure in which they can put their ideas and thoughts. But again, it's not a detailed structure. It's just a structure that they can work around with. Okay. So you could do this as a, even a paired task. You don't have to do it as an individual task, okay? Or they, you could use a thing pair share where they get into, they just put their thoughts down and they share their thoughts with their partner so that you don't have to go around hearing everyone. They can share their thoughts with their partner. And then maybe, you know, you can get them into smaller groups of four and then kind of share their ideas in those groups where they can make their edits and things like that, okay? Should we move on? Any questions at this stage? Anyone who'd like to unmute and share or talk or ask something at this stage? Anyone? No one? Sure? Okay. All right, so we move to the next bit, which is writing the story. Now, you could provide them with a beginning, okay? Uh, if there are younger children, you could provide them with a picture, with a couple of pictures, not a single picture, with a couple of pictures so I can pick up what suits my story, all right? I may wanna pick up, I may not wanna pick up, all right? Uh, you could probably have them, you could probably give them a story beginning like this, okay? Um, they could use your story beginning. They could choose not to use the story beginning, all right? It's up to them, okay? And post which you can get them to start using their story map and write their stories. Now, you can use the story map first and then give them the beginning, or you can give them the beginning first and then tell them to create a story mountain. It's up to you to decide how you would like to do this, all right? Okay, so keep it flexible. There is no rule that this has to be first or this has to come later. It's up to you to choose how you would like to use it in your classrooms, what is best that your children are responding to. Okay, so you could give them a story like this to write. All right, um, you could also tell them to use um, the comic strip uh, boxes, okay, to write their stories. All right, uh, rather than write it in length, at, at length, okay. Um, what this is going to help them is develop a flow uh, and give them a point to think is what the story beginnings are going to help them do. Um, after they're done with their story, can anybody tell me what is it that you need to do? Come on, any thoughts? I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Any thoughts? What happens after you give them the story to write and now they've written the story? So now what do we do? Anyone revise, me? maybe? Okay, revise. Super. Moral of the story for okay. younger children. Okay. Okay. What do they gain from it? Okay. Anyone else? And if there is no no picture, we can uh, we can just ask them to present a picture for the story. Okay. They could draw their best scene. Or yeah. Something they like could that. draw. Yeah. Okay. Everyone check and edit. Super Vidya. Anyone else? May I come in? Yeah. Um, we could also say how our ending could be different from what it was in the story. Um, mm -hmm. If it's ended in a different way. Either they could come up with different endings for the same story. Um, one. Uh -huh. 
and, okay. and secondly if we had to all construct a story and we wanted like not do it in writing writing because i deal with a very young age group mm-hmm. that i teach mm-hmm. we could also do it for illustrating that story into a next comic strip that you have said of like course. each one builds on that story lovely you could even uh, sheetal you know you could even do it as a oral thing okay like a uh, uh, where you can get them into yeah, small yeah. circles yeah we do and then have the children construct the story yeah we yeah. do yeah 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 and once we've done orally then they illustrate on each box of what they have said so that the class builds a story kind of a thing or a small group builds a story kind of a thing Wonderful. and also if they're not very happy with the ending you know if it's not a very happy happy ending it's a very they can give it a sad ending or a dramatic ending or you know they want to give it something like an adventurous ending um they right. can come up with that kind of a thing lovely she got a great idea great so um yeah super can, thank you so much for sharing yeah go on we can also make a character sketch the character words character mm-hmm. traits of the uh, like the hero of the story or the you know whosoever was there in the story so we can make us make a sketch character descriptor yeah we can use character description for that lovely so uh, smiley what i'm hearing you say is um you, instead of writing a whole story you can just probably take a hero yeah, of yeah. your story and yeah. then just describe what the who the hero is a little bit like how what is the character of the hero Characters, how does he look yeah. so you can use descriptive words to describe the hero which could yeah. be which is a wonderful way of getting children to start writing descriptors which is yeah. lovely and this really have helped me oh lovely that's and thanks to you for this <laughs> <laughs> you've been a part of one of my sessions yes i know yeah. <laughs> nice so uh, students Ma'am? start getting connected to pictures and start thinking about it yeah lovely poonam yeah manjita ma'am uh, ma'am ek we can even ask the children like how do you relate this story in your personal life because many of many a times uh, you know personal responses when they are writing in passages and you know, so that also can be because they have cre- now they have created their own story so how do you relate it with your any personal experience or something maybe right. they put somewhere related within their heart so they may open up with that so yeah they could sure you could even try that as a strategy lovely uh, sarika has said everyone is unable to write in sequence so we can arrange comic strips so that everyone can write yes you can alternately sarika what you can do is give them three uh, three columns okay or you can give them three sheets um, uh, you know cut in vertical length okay sizable ones uh, you can have them write the beginning on one middle part of the story on one and the end part of the story on one okay so what you're then doing is helping them see that this could be the beginning and then this happens and then it finally this happens okay so you could even use connectors okay so you know in the beginning and then or next and finally so when you give them these connective words to use connectors so the so called okay uh, children are then able to start with something go on to something else and then finally see something else okay so you can provide them with connectors all right connecting words story sequencing yes hints can be given yes lovely they can also, so uh, also yes namita you raised your hand comparisons yeah i was just saying that uh, you could also give them an option of if they had to mix up the stories with one mm-hmm. or the other groups mm-hmm. so which one would they choose as a setting or what would they like their ending to be something yeah. like that yeah so it like you have heard about mixed up fairy tales and all mm-hmm. why not mix up adventure tales of course you could lovely that's a great so that's another lovely strategy you yeah. can mix up adventure tra- uh, and you can use an entire softboard in your classroom just to yes. do this yes yes okay which Beautiful. is lovely you can get everybody to write a short yeah. setting yeah. and then ask them to because at the end when and... everybody is narrated many a times you want oh that would have been a lovely ending for my story as well or this would have been lovely. a super setting yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you True. lovely lovely namrata that's a great idea yes sunita Uh, they can use comparisons like you know metaphors similes whatever they can manage depending on their grade the figures of speech yes yes lovely they could use also figures of speech to make the writing interesting right but yes the kid the children need to know right what is it that you as teachers are expecting out of their work okay they need to understand that if i have to uh, get a 10 on 10 in my essay or if my teacher wants something okay i need to do something about it right so you provide them with a rubric you tell them that or a checklist okay you tell them that these are the five things i'm going to be seeing in your today's writing okay 
these are the five things I'm going to be looking at while I am going to be scoring you or whether I'm going to be assessing you. Your beginning should be exciting. Now you can change this to suit the level of your class. You can change this to suit uh, if you feel that there is a particular error that children are doing across your grade. You want to use that as uh, a learning journey for them. So you could use that as a, one of part of the checklist. Okay. So if you see that, um, like Namrata said, uh, they need to use figures of speech. If they aren't using figures of speech, but you've already introduced them in your classroom and you want them to use figures of speech in your writing. Okay. Then you can even do that. All right. So it depending on what you want them to do in that task and what is it that you're really going to be assessing them on. If you can just provide them with this list prior to them writing. Okay. And then let them mark a tick mark. So you can even add a column here. Okay. Saying um, student and teacher. Okay. So you have, they have picked and then you have also picked. All right. So have they uh, used eight descriptive words in their essays? Have they um, is there an element of danger or risk or excitement or disaster or surprise? Is that that element that makes it an adventure story? Uh, the main character, is that character described well? Can you see the character description? Uh, does the story follow a sequence? If you're really struggling with sequencing, are your students, uh, you know, able to write in a sequence? So you've told them that you've got to focus on your sequence. So now what your children have is focus points. Okay. They are going to focus on these five things while they're writing. Get them to go back to it, read what they have written and whether they are matching this checklist or not. Okay, so this is another um, strategy that you can use, which is a very effective tool when it comes to writing. Uh, checklists are really, really critical. Okay. Uh, Maybe they can come up with the second draft, right? Yes, and they can rewrite it, then come up that with can the be second a second draft and then yes. further refine it and create a third draft and stuff. Yeah, right. so generally, uh, it's preferred that students do a second and third draft because yeah. that's when they are actually able to kind of write something uh, effectively. So when you're talking about effective writing, I think that's when it really comes in. Yeah. Uh, any questions so far? And also, if you can just extend your idea, uh, we actually went ahead to use an online storyboarder to publish the story where they can share it with other children. That brings in a lot of excitement for children, you know. Um, they are very, somewhere the engagement is very high with the gadgets more than teachers, I think so. So I think this is a good way to facilitate their interest and it also mm. brings in a lot of uh, creativity there. Right, Sheetal. Super. So you uh, picking up from Sheetal's idea in case you don't have access to, you know, the story. Sheetal, what was that uh, storyboard, right? It's called storyboard, but even you can just do it as a plain paper book and put it in your old school library. Like, yeah. uh, and then that's let what I was saying. Hmm. The other children access it, so it becomes like a class-wise competition that they come up with their own book. So right. I mean, the the competition somehow brings excitement in students. <laughs> so. So, you know, uh, when I was in school, uh, I don't know how many of you have experienced this, but uh, obviously I was in school in the 90s, sure. in the late 90s. Uh, we used to have something called class magazine. Okay. And our teachers used to ask us for uh, contributions for that class magazine. It was an annual thing. Yeah. And uh, our best writing pieces used to be put in that. And that used wow. to be made like a little file or a booklet. Uh, so at the end yeah. of the year, when the parents yeah. used to come uh, for a parent-teacher meeting, they yeah. would go through these yeah. articles. And these articles would, the best of these three or four, would then be published in the school magazine. So that was, wow. uh, yeah. you know, that was one thing that uh, my school used to do. So, yeah, that, that, that yeah. was like, yeah. just brought back Absolutely. great memories. <laughs> Right. I'm she glad called. I did. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Manjusha, thank you. Web series. Yes, we are going to be having lots of web series in the future. You're liking the session. I'm so glad you are. Yeah, you can present a story in a mind map or a word bed. Yes. You provide a criteria. Yes, Namrata. Any any other thoughts? Come on, let me hear you some more. Anybody else who's done something that's exciting in your class to get your reluctant writers to write? Ma'am, I used to I used to take grammar classes along. So mm. I take stories like I show them the story of gingerbread man for nouns or mm. for verbs. Sorry. So they see the story and then I tell them to pick up the verbs in the story. So this mm -hmm. really helped them. Like, you know, for this is something which is out of the box, but mm -hmm. it really helps them to um, means learn verbs in a nicer way. Lovely. 
Okay. And it is very long lasting. Whenever they see gingerbread man, they mm-hmm. recall the verbs, and then right. they can they can say yes, ma'am. These this is the these are the action words and everything. Yeah, true, true. That's a great way. So that's how you can use stories in your classrooms also. Lovely, great idea. Anyone else? Anyone else who would like to share anything? Like Smiley did. Anybody use any strategies? No one. Anyone else who's used anything in their class that they would like to share? Okay, then let me let me share since yes, yes, yes. the others are yeah. So, what about showing good samples, Viveki? Suppose you want to kind of you know help children to understand what is a good setting. right mm-hmm. so you take one or two samples and actually you know help them analyze what is there in that setting why is that setting interesting mm-hmm. you know or a, a very good introduction like you said an exciting introduction so mm-hmm. come up you know bring up two or three samples and then let them read it as a class and say why is this introduction mm-hmm. interesting you know kind of analyze that with them so analyzing good and strong samples may also be a good idea right mm-hmm. yeah true yeah and i think um uh, teach them reading also will help them in writing ah, right. right so i remember somebody saying right in the beginning what skills are required for good writing somebody wrote reading in the mentimeter so i don't know who it is so maybe that person can kind of elaborate a little somebody wrote uh, can reading. i uh, actually uh, see when when it comes to reading yeah sumitra yeah okay yeah when it comes to reading see uh, see if if we give them lot of reading uh, basically in the class or lot of reading practice uh, uh, i think definitely it will help them in improving the vocabulary one thing what i have observed what i do in the class most of the time and uh, uh, which has helped me also in uh, building up uh, the sentences and stretching the sentence all this actually which has definitely helped me because i teach grade 2 3 and 4 english so definitely for these low grades i think lot of reading and lot of uh, practice in the vocabulary in, in different ways in fact definitely will help actually great sumita thank you for your input lovely also um, building like a word bank mm-hmm. like connected to your reading if once if you have read a story or something to your kids and if you build a word bank probably that word bank chart can go back to class and you know it can be used as a reinforcement in another setting or another story making something like that nice. so yeah, some sure. you know it's like a the, those kind of reinforcements help them to for that vocabulary to stay and for their long term usage and everything mm mm-hmm. yeah yes anyone else Deepika, Munal, anybody would like to share with their Athena, Sindhu, no one, Chandra Lila. Also, Chandra. character Chandra. building is also one more thing. I feel you know, at uh-huh. what point should you introduce your character in the story, and how do you reveal your character? Uh-huh. Doing sessions, something like mini lessons on those also, I think can uh, promote them to you know. Uh, make a make a better story i feel right something true. like that doing some mini lessons on just building your characters how mm-hmm. many characters uh, other characters do you want what uh, your protagonist right. should be should it be a male or female an animal why thinking on mm. those those lines you know just like uh, making them be authors for the day and think like an author also like right is a good strategy Great. to like you are an author today wear your author caps and who would your audience be how would you choose your characters mm-hmm. doing such mini lessons yeah. also helps yeah and i think a lot of mini lessons you know help finally give it a picture so yes. ideally as a teacher i wouldn't do more than three or four writing pieces in the whole academic year right because um, like you said those mini lessons are very very important they are very very critical Uh, like Jashi said, mm. uh, showing them what the best pieces look like. Um, right. Uh, again, making multiple drafts or something. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. So all these kind of add to uh, you know their final output. So if yes. if if we do a lot in 
you know, we are expecting them to just keep writing. We just give them beginning uh, statements or we give them pictures and tell them to just keep writing. Um, probably may not be as effective as if you do uh, smaller chunks, like you said, Nabrata. Like mini lessons. Yeah, right. Mini lessons somewhere are more effective, uh, which helps them kind of put uh, things in perspective for overall uh, reading. Super. And even journal yeah. writing is also a beautiful way where, you know, they get into that habit of recording their memories, mm-hmm. their visits to places. And that's how I think they they have built their own vocabulary. That mm-hmm. getting into that habit of journal writing. Right. True. Yeah. Super. Yeah, uh, Vidya, uh, you're right. After reading stories, we can give students summaries to write, which help other children in the class to choose the book and read. That's also a great, great strategy. So you can do that in your library classes. Actually, that will be like, a, you know, to at least ensure that children have read. Uh, reading helps yeah. them getting synonyms. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sunita. I'd like to say something. I- I'm a librarian, uh, but one uh-huh. thing what I noticed was all these kids who like to read, they hate to write about the story. I mean, they don't mind talking about it. They love to talk. So uh, every time I notice when they come to the library to uh, select a book, they they don't Mm -hmm. mind sitting and reading, but they don't want to write many of them. So what I do is I just ask them to recommend a book. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so we have a paper, we have a a sheet where everybody can recommend if they want. So once one Mm -hmm. person does it, everybody wants to do it. You know, if you force them to do it, nobody wants to do it because they want that library just to read. You know, there are some people Mm -hmm. who don't want to read. So they don't mind mm-hmm. doing the, all these things, writing work and coloring work and drawing work. Yeah. But this is one thing I noticed with the readers, they really don't mm-hmm. want to write during the library time. <laughs> so they don't mind speaking I though. Know. Yeah. Not all readers are great writers. Right, right. I have noticed that. And so I all good writers to... will read. But all good writers also read. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but uh, giving them sentence starts also sometimes helps. Yeah sentence starters you know like Mm. prompts where you Mm. give a part of the sentence and ask them to like you know in one sentence if they had to recommend it or you know had to make a personal connect or something like that how would they describe the story so for the main character too much of writing but still they are Mm. like in a way promoting the story yeah they can write which is their favorite character or which is their favorite scene yeah and why like in a sentence why why would you recommend that helps yes yeah True. So, I mean, this um, great idea. So you can uh, have your vocabulary there. You can have your connectors. You can have your opening statements. How would you want to open? And what kind of punctuations you're looking at? So when you have your vocabulary connectors, openers, and punctuation that you're expecting children to use, most of your issues get sorted. Yeah. Plot structures and story pyramids. Yes, story pyramids can be used. They're very, very effective. So that's the whole mountain story thing that I do is a story pyramid, okay? Um, students are mostly picture-related stories. Yeah, so doodling is a great idea. Uh, the more they doodle, the, the more exciting life gets for them. So let them please doodle in your language books, um, you know, if they want to doodle. <laughs> Anyone else who would like to share anything else? Any great, amazing strategies? Okay, so coming back to where we, our challenge page, where did my challenge page go? The challenges that we wrote down, right, when we started. Okay. Grammatical errors, sentence rules and punctuation, spelling, flow of thoughts, sequencing and organization, organization of thoughts, structure, Speed of writing, interest in writing, no connection with writing, transferring ideas onto paper, content, handwriting, I'm not sure, but lack of vocabulary and ideas. I hope most of these have been dealt with in today's session. Do you think that uh, you will be able to look at if you, you know, you kind of give them the rubric and you tell them what is it that you're looking for and that they have to focus on punctuation, they have to focus on details, structures, uh, you get them to, you, know, you provide them with the vocabulary, you generate it from them, in fact, ideas. Uh, you give them the sequencing map that you really want them to follow. You give them uh, the beginning, middle, end, or you give them like little boxes in which they make the connectors, or you give them story pyramids, 
all these will help them to develop their structures again uh, because they do not have ideas but then you providing them with so many ideas because you're uh, you know kind of um, getting like a community of ideas for everyone so somebody who is like a silent child doesn't speak because he really doesn't have the ideas um doesn't want to speak but has got an idea already right uh, now can go and implement that idea in his writing um obviously also will do a great job okay so these are some tools that we can use in our classroom so i hope most of your issues have been dealt with there something in the chat window okay all right um okay so to kind of help you support further okay we have a continuous professional development workshop that we keep doing and these happen on uh, saturdays so that it's convenient for teachers to attend it's only a saturday workshop from 2:30 to 4 o'clock am i right treshri uh 2:30 to 4 yes we key Yeah. So um, our workshops are on two thirty to four in the afternoon on Saturdays, and these are the workshops that we have in the pipeline, uh, where we will be talking about growth mindset. How to use growth mindset in the classroom? What tasks and activities you can do? What is growth mindset? How you can encourage children for growth mindset? Then we're going to be having literacy workshops where we're talking about storytelling as a tool. We're going to be talking about reading strategies. We're going to be talking about writing strategies. Then we're going to be talking about strategies that we can use in our class for differentiation. So there are. lot of children in our class who who are who they are like either above or below like in average right so they they require different theater instruction so what is differentiation how do you deal with them in your classroom uh then on 24th we have collaborative learning strategies so there are some great strategies we can use for collaborative learning on 8th october we have social emotional ethical learning what is it and how do you use these in your how do you use this in your classroom uh bridging the classroom to real life so how is it that we can use classroom we can how is it we can bring in real life into the classroom then we have art of questioning and our most awaited workshops are assessment which is divided into four parts because it's not that easy <laughs> assessment have always been tough for everyone so assessment part 1 part 2 part 3 and part 4 uh and then we have visible thinking routines what are they and how we can use them in the classroom then we have three series of uh, leadership workshops for uh, school leaders and principals um, or those aspiring to be leaders uh, how do you build and empower a leadership team uh, teacher professional standards part 1 and part 2 so do spread the word and we would love to see most of you as a part of our uh, professional development workshop for teachers um, before you exit there is a link in the chat box um, what i want you to do is click on that link and i want you to tell me honestly from the bottom of your heart <laughs> what has been the biggest takeaway from today's session and which of the sessions would you like to be a part of is there anything that you would like us to um kind of uh, develop specifically to suit your need uh, in terms of the scope workshop is there any area that you think uh that you require some sort of help or that you require some sort of an a deeper understanding of So if you do, please put that in the second question. Um, and if you can quickly click on the Padlet link, uh, what has been your biggest takeaway from today's session? And um, that will be really, really helpful for us. So on that note, is there any anybody who would like to say something or uh, before we kind of close this? I was expecting a lot more participation <laughs> from teachers. Uh, please. They are all wonderful teachers. So, anybody else who would like to let me also, Gauri. Oh, okay. My favorite episodes and characters from Marvel Studio, etc., can also be used to make the story. Yes, you could. Yes, Majusha, that's a great idea. So you can have, or you can even have this one particular character that you would want to write on. Yeah. Yeah. So Namrata and Vidya, thank you so much for sharing it on the chat window. Could you also quickly put it up on the Padlet for us, if that's possible? Yeah, lovely. Yes, Namrata. Thank you for that.
So you can follow Adyayan on um, Instagram and Facebook um, if you're not following us yet. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, looking forward to the visual thinking routine session. Yes, Amrita, sure. So you can, you can um, if you are a part of the Adyayan WhatsApp group or you are, if you're following us on Instagram or Facebook, you will definitely get the updates on this or you can just contact the office they will send you an email <clears throat> yeah the more we the more we have collective ideas coming in uh, you know <clears throat> always remember the more we have collected like today uh, there was so much I learned from you today, honestly speaking. There were some great strategies because you are there. Um, you, are, you are there in the classroom with your children, right? Um, you, you are now dealing with children who have come back to classrooms after the whole pandemic situation after two years. And um, what's important is to help us understand um, what is really working for you and what is it that you have done in the classroom to make that one difference, right, in your class? And where is it that you're struggling so that there are teachers in, in the group who can help you, right? So there have been lovely, some really, really wonderful ideas that um, have been shared today, um, you know. So kindly, um, if there's any, anyone else who would want to share... Um, There's some great ideas that we've already shared. So anything that, you know, works for you is super. Okay. Even if it works for one child, it's a great idea, according to me. Okay. Because it's that one child who's made a difference in your life. Okay. So uh, please be a part of our sessions if you really haven't. Have all your teachers attended. It's on a Saturday afternoon specifically because most of you have half day working on Saturdays. So uh, we have, you know, and we do not want to take take too much of your time in terms of, you know, your weekend. But uh, if, if it becomes like a, um, a great group where we can all learn with each other, um, I think teaching as a profession is going to <laughs> take a different meaning. And I think that's what Adhyan's aim is. We, we are here to kind of build a community of uh, learners. We are here to build a community of teachers uh, who can actually support each other and uh, help each other in, in, in our learning journeys. Uh, and it's great to obviously know, know more teachers, right? So yeah, September series, okay. So you can actually, what I'm gonna do is, God, if you can just stop sharing the screen for a second. Um, if you can stop sharing the screen for a second, I'm gonna reshare the, um, um, the, the workshops. And if you wanna just take a screenshot and get in touch with us, you could do that, okay? So if you can just take a screenshot of these workshops and get in touch with us, if you'd really like to attend, um, Gauri will be sending you an uh, email regarding that. So yeah, wonderful. So thank you so much teachers. If anybody would like to stay back, ask some more questions or uh, you would want, you know, kind of to have a little bit of a quick chat with us, we are here for about 10 more minutes. Thank you, Sunita. Thank you, Sunita. Thank you, Sumitra. Ma'am, and I would like to share something. Uh, yes, Ma'am. Uh, yeah, Ma'am, actually, in fact, uh, thank you so much for the session. It was very good. I mean, um, see, a lot of things probably we had all these ideas which we didn't uh, think, probably few things, in fact, or few things which uh, we don't have time to, uh, you know, Conduct few sessions of all this probably uh, now we can <coughs> now probably I will definitely plan something uh, better than I mean uh, I mean something more like all this that's what I felt now in this session. Yeah, true. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Subhita, for that. That's a wonderful feedback. Thank you, Deepika. Thank you, Manjusha. Thank you, Namrata.
Yes, Pooja, that's very important. I like the term you use, collaborative learning. <laughs> if we learn with each other, together with each other, it's always great. Super. Thank you, Yashwant. <laughs>